So my name is Max Lagrière, uh, Maxime Henri Lagrière for the whole name. This is the brewery Lanex, and we're a, a brasserie fermenterie, which means we make beers and other types of fermented beverages as well. Uh, we started this brewery three years ago with my colleague Grégoire. Uh, but the story dates back way longer than that. We're actually high school friends since we were 12 or 13. And then we each went our own way. Uh, Grégoire went into fashion design and I, I studied astrophysics. And then about 10 years ago, I came back to Belgium. We bumped into each other again and we actually thought, well, there's two things that we want to do. One is we ran the half marathon of Brussels the week after. We almost died, but it did culminate in me running the the Marathon des Sables in 2016, which is kind of the, the big aim for our running. Uh, and on the same evening, we decided, well, wouldn't it be nice to find out how to make beer? And bit by bit, year after year, we got better and better until about two, three years ago, we decided to set up this brewery. Now, uh, unfortunately for Grégoire, his wife didn't like beer at all, still doesn't, uh, which was getting quite frustrating because I was sharing all my uh, our experiments with my wife, but Grégoire couldn't, so we decided to try different fermented beverages, and that's where our ginger beer and elderflower champagne and these things came into. Uh, Beer-wise, actually, we when we started experimenting with beer, our main focus was on the yeast, so a lot of modern uh, breweries are really working on the hops and the dry hopping and how to get hops, but we actually we did a, a big, big research on yeast, and we kind of fell in love with the, the saison yeast because it's... Uh, Highly attenuating, actually gives a lot of body and flavor to uh, to a beer, even at a relatively light level of alcohol. So our first beer was the Saison de Bruxelles, which is a reasonably typical Saison, maybe a bit more bitter, kind of to keep the, the process flavor in there. And then we actually used the same yeast to experiment with other types of beer, which we got the, the Black Saison, which has a lot of uh, torrified malts in there. So we've got a little of a, a stout port retouch in it, but because the Saison yeast actually attenuates so much, we get a very light and, and easy to drink beer. And then the, the third one we did was the Weisse Saison. Uh, so German Weissen actually means uh, wheat. It's like the Belgian Witzbier actually comes from wheat. It doesn't mean white, but it comes from wheat. Uh, but the big difference is that in Germany, because they have the Reinheitsgebot, all the wheat needs to be malted. Uh, whereas in Belgium, we use non-malted wheat. So we have uh, the Weisse Saison, which has 50% malted wheat. But, you know, we, we remain Belgium, so we put some lemon zest and some coriander in there, like in the Belgian uh, wheat beer. And then the fourth one, the last one of the four saisons, which we thought, well, as we're doing seasons, why not make four seasons? And they're actually quite uh, apt for each season if you, if you go around them. So we missed one for, for autumn, so we made the, the Rosse saison, which is an amber beer with, with bergamot and also with the saison yeast. So that's... Basically, our basic stands of beer. Now we're doing experiments. We've got a blonde out. We've got a, a moose milk stout, which we came out. Um, at the moment, these are kind of one-offs. Uh, we might we might have other beers, but we're actually small, such a small beer that we don't actually think we can have more than five or six beers running at one time because we don't have the stock to do it. Especially because parallel to that, we all have all our, our fermented beverages. Uh, so those we've been developing as well. We have uh, now we have two that we have all year round. So we have the ginger beer and uh, raspberry mint, which we have all year round. Because we use frozen raspberries, we can we have access to them. Uh, and luckily for us, the frozen raspberries keep the yeast because we actually use the yeast on the fruit themselves to to ferment the beverages. Uh, through a change in procedure, however, because they used to be alcohol between one and two degrees, but we've managed to. Cut that back a lot, I think we're about at a uh, half a degree alcohol now, which means we can actually sell them as non-alcoholic, uh, which will help a lot actually in also the sales and marketing of the beverages, because at the moment we didn't really know where to put them in the shops. Is it, is it a cider? Is it, you can't put it with the softs because then parents will buy it for their kids and stuff, so that will uh, solve it a lot. And we've noticed that a lot of bars use them as mixers, uh, and at home as well we use them a lot to make cocktails. So one of the next... Uh, no alcoholic beverages that is coming out is we're working on a tonic. So it'll be uh, the first bio tonic in Belgium and I think, uh, well, there's not that many in Europe going around anyway. How much, what's your production per year before well, COVID? Well, we're, we're a young brewery, so it, it, it's, it's, I can't tell you what our, I could tell you what it was last year and it was the year before. And I think we, we, we more than doubled last year. So I think last year it must have been around, let's see. I 
I think we did about 500 hectare in total, uh, but we're growing. Um, I mean, people are always asking us how, how is COVID affecting you? Uh, for us, it's mainly impacting our growth. Um, we have that luck that we have, uh, the, the beers for us had a big knock because we, we actually sold most of our beers in bars and restaurants. Uh, but most of our fermented beverages were sold in uh, by alcohol shops, uh, even chains and stuff like that. And we're, we're looking at expanding that as well. Uh, and because people were home more, actually, they, they, we had an increase in sales in shops and, 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 and that. So we, we, we did still have an, uh, an increase in, in sales last year, but not, not as, as, as big as planned. So we're, we're running behind on schedule. Uh, so it was a break for us, the COVID, but you know, it did. We did manage to do some selling. I think there's other breweries that are much more dependent on uh, bars and restaurants that have a, have a lot, and also on one product. I mean, you know, if you just do beers, you're less flexible than if you have more, more different. And um, yeah, well, actually, we have just bottled, or we're about to bottle our uh, a cherry wine that we made. So you know, we we like we probably within the next year we'll we'll have tried a sake. You know, we like trying out different kinds of fermented beverages. Um, and it, it's nice because we can experiment. For example, the wine now, we've done 200 liters. So it's not a huge risk. It's not like we need to. And if it works, we can work more on those things. And otherwise, we'll, we'll do other recipes. So it's, it's one of the joys of working here is that we, we have the beers. We love playing around with the beers. Uh, but we also do other things, which... So diver the, being a, having diverse products was, was a, kind of helped you. So 500 hectoliters, so not all of that's beer. Is it 500 hectoliters beer or is it, uh, or and, uh, and the other think, beverages? No, I think, I think that, that for, for two, that was about total. Uh, total, so yeah, what so percentage of that would I think, I think last year beer? it was around 300 beer and 200 uh, fermentations, but the, the percentage of fermentations is, is creeping up. So our, our best seller is the Saison de Roussel, and the second one is a ginger beer. So it's, it's not like, you know, they're, Right. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, uh, also when you talk to distributors, the, the thing we have with the fermentations is that we are unique in what we sell. Um, with, with the beers, the, the craft scene is, is, is exploding in Brussels. I think we were the, the seventh craft brewery in Brussels. There's probably about 15 now and, and yeah, 15. It's growing. Um, I think within uh, the craft brewing scene in Brussels, we have a unique voice because we're not into the whole IPAs and, and which are very nice beverages. I like them, but it's not our forte and it's not really what I, I drink on a day-to-day -day basis when I, you know, my table beer used to be a saison before I started doing my brewery. So hence, we, you know, we, we, we rolled into that and that's the kind of beer I like to drink every day. Uh, but it does give us also an advantage that, you know, that, that we're not in competition with all the ones that make the more funky beers like La Source, Le Hermitage, I think, you know, which, which, um, which have much more extravagant beers, uh, and, but also then the prices are in line, so it, it, it's, it's there. Um, but for the fermentations, there's nobody actually that does what we're doing. So you have, you have other people that make beverages, but not all, you know, we honestly, you know, we get the crates of lemons in here to make our lemon juice the day of produce. We don't buy frozen lemon juice. We, the ginger, I'm making the bug now, it's cutting the ginger. The day every day for five six days to 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 develop the so it's 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 a craft of love and the beverages you, you taste it so I think there it's it's a unique product that nobody has um, and it's recognized as such so in that way for us to actually expand because at the moment we're still mainly selling in Brussels and a little bit in Brabant but not much further the the potential for us to grow. And to differentiate ourselves with with other products is going right. I wouldn't be surprised if this, if in two thousand twenty one, the fermentations was actually surpassed the sales of beer, um, which for us is not an issue as long as we can make both and sell both. We don't need uh, to have one of them actually dominate the other. Let's let the market decide, and as long as we can experiment and make new beverages, which is where our joy lies, is into finding new things and and, and tinkering with recipes, then then we'll be happy. And Saison is a particularly uh, Belgian thing. We have uh, Saison Dupont, which mm -hmm. of course is my everyday drinking beer. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've tried yours and they're really mm -hmm. good. They're in line. Uh, do you consider yourself Belgian Saison in the style or do you have your own style? I think, I think we, we do put Saison in, we're from Brussels, so I, I think we do have um, 
if we're not looking at the white saisons and the black saisons as the ones that are that are a bit around it, I think what maybe ours is a little bit different. We, we put a bit of there's less than I think there's about half a percent of, of smoked malt in in our saison, which adds a touch that's not really in other ones. Uh, I think we, we have a bit more bitter hops, so our, our saison is a bit more bitter than the other one, maybe a bit darker. Although that if you look at the the canon of what a saison beer should be, it's allowed. It's in the wrong bottle. So again, then they can have the whole discussion. It's not brewed in uh, Le Reno, Henegau, where this is also where it's originally from. Uh, but flavor-wise, I think you're there, I think. But then every saison has, you know, if, if you go to the saison of saint fenian if you go to um, the saison d'Herpemer, they all put their own touch on it. So yeah, if I think what would differentiate ours is, is the smokiness that some people get in it or not, but it's definitely there. It's slightly more bitter. Uh, and then... The fact it's maybe a little bit less acid than some. I mean, some some saisons have this kind of little acid trying at the end, which I quite, find quite refreshing, which ours doesn't have, really have. Um, but yeah, I think, I think it's. And what's your season. when you plan this? Where did you hope hope to be, say, in a few years? Is it bigger? Is it maintaining the same size? Some people like you know remaining small. Mm -hmm. Do you see yourself growing big with production, or do you, are you doing it? You support yourselves and keeping but the fun that, alive. The, the aim here is to support, so we, we definitely still need to grow in order to support ourselves. Unfortunately, uh, both the beers and the fermentations are uh, big volume, low margin products, unless you really have, uh, you know, you, you sell your, you, you manage to sell your beers at, at, at uh, with a really nice margin, but we're not in that type of beer. So the saison beers are usually beers that, that sell not at the hugest margins. Uh, so we definitely have to grow a bit, but the idea is not to become, you know, to, to outgrow the walls. Here we have uh, uh, two people working with us right now. I think eventually in the future we might envisage a third, but that, that would be it. Um, we're going to have, we, we had a, a tasting room here on occasion once before, but now we're actually constructing one, the, the space next door, which we have as a stock. So those are more the, the aspects that, and as I said, I think for us it's more, growing laterally, having more different kinds of products. So if we have a good sake, if we have a cherry wine or make a, uh, an elderberry wine and those kind of things would be nice. Um, but I, mean, we're, we're, I think we're capable of, of, of easily doubling production still with, the, with the, the setup that we have here. But I think that's the aim. The aim is not to start having to buy new things and, you know, govern the world. We like being local. We still will always want to have 75% of our production sold here in Brussels if possible, but if not, then we'll have to look, uh, you know, Belgium first and then, then maybe export a bit, but uh, our idea is not to export out and just produce and export the, the things that you want to be around the people that drink your beverage and enjoy it. You have some uh, unusual wood on your brewing, is yes. that, uh, how did you get those? Is it something you built yourself or? No, no, we bought it, so it's, um, English material, we have an English English brewing setup, which means that our, our mash tank is, is not uh, heatable. So you see there's no heating element under it. And uh, the wood is actually used for isolation. So inside it's, it's uh, inox, it's uh, steel. Steel? Yeah. Steel. Yeah, stainless it's, steel. Uh, sorry? Stainless steel, steel yeah. yeah. And then in between the wood and uh, the, the stainless steel, there is some kind of uh, isolation material in order for it to lose. So this one basically, when we when we do the mash in, two hours later, it's lost not even one degree of, of, of heat. The, the whole point of the wood is to help keep the heat in. So the same thing with the cold water tank, the boiling tank, and, and the other tanks here. Wow, really hands on. So do you you say, is you're not supporting yourself? So you guys have other jobs? Or? We don't. We don't. Yeah. Uh, but this the, is a full time. This is full time, um, and we are we are starting to to support ourselves. From it, but That's I'm great. just saying it's, it's not like you're making. Yeah, yeah it's not know, like you, you don't have your Lamborghini yet. Yeah, to send the schools to the kids to university, <laughs> we're not quite there yet. So, so yes, we, we are. We are. We are earning enough to pay the rent, but not much more at the moment. But that's normal. I think every. I mean, you know, we've been properly rolling for two, two and a half years now. Yeah, that's not bad. You know, we we've reached the turning point of of actually earning money and not just working to pay the bills here. And then um, the idea is to uh, obviously at some point earn a bit more. But the idea is not to become uh, yeah 
you know, the next A, B, and Bev. Definitely not. <laughs> but I mean, I think even even for us, um, although I think like many brewers in Brussels, um, they were an inspiration. If you look at Brasserie de la Seine, for us that's even too big. So uh, I love what they do, uh, and I love how they do it. So I must say that I still, when I go out, it's probably my beer of choice is a Zinne beer. And then later in the evening, I'll have a Brusseler. But uh, but yeah, even that because then you're for me. I don't know, so I don't want to insult it, but for me, you almost you turn into a business owner rather than here, you know, on Saturday, I come here to cut my ginger. If that stops and, you know, I have a machine cutting 50 kilos of ginger because I need to do productions times 10, then where's the fun? So. Yeah, it's a personal choice. Yeah. How you want your brewery to do.